I want to start a evening, Sunday evening series of dealing, uh, looking at some things with the Holy Spirit, uh, the Comforter, and to take a look, the intent of this uh, series of lessons on the evenings for a few weeks will be to take a look at how the Holy Spirit of God uh, abides or works in us mm -hmm. and the effects that he has on our lives. Mm -hmm. I believe it's important that we understand everything that we can about God and the more I know about God, the more I know that I love God. Amen. Amen. The more I know about Jesus, the more appreciative I am of what he has done for me. And the more I learn about the Holy Spirit of God, the third in the Godhead, uh, the Godhood, everything that makes God God, the Holy Spirit, the more I learn about Him, uh, the more I am appreciative of what He does for us. Mm -hmm. So for a few uh, weeks, we want to look in the evenings uh, at the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, so you can call this the Holy Spirit the Comforter, uh, part one. In John chapter 14, and we had a uh, wonderful study in our uh, brother's uh, training class this afternoon. Uh, we didn't have anybody here that uh, was willing to raise their hand and say they needed training. Amen. Uh, Brother Mellis, uh, we didn't have anybody here that needed training. Uh, so we went on and we used this whole little class or something to talk about things. And we looked uh, in our continuation of John chapter 13 mm -hmm. and our study about that and what we uh, want to make sure we understand as we look at John chapter 13 as we talk about the leadership in the Lord's church, uh, elders and deacons and those things and, and leaders in general in particular, uh, we want to make sure that we have an understanding of what it means to be a leader in the Lord's church. And uh, John chapter 13, it gives uh, a great, it's a great study for that purpose. Uh, it teaches about the importance of being a servant. Uh, so we looked at some things there, and in John 13, Jesus had uh, called uh, his disciples together. They came together for what we uh, refer to as the Last Supper. And as they were sitting there eating, Jesus got up from the table and went out and proceeded to wash their feet. And he was preparing them for the time that would come that they would have to remember that they truly are servants and also about the rough times and things that they would uh, need to prepare their minds to endure over the next several days. Uh, so at the end of John chapter 13, uh, it says in verse 36, because uh, Jesus had told them that he would be leaving, and uh, in verse 36 of John chapter 13, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, uh, whither goest thou? Uh, Jesus answered him, uh, whether I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, that's different. And what we talked about this morning in John chapter 8, I just want to drop this while we on this uh, street here. Uh, this morning in John chapter 8, verse 21 and 24, Jesus says, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. Amen. And what he tells uh, Peter here in this text is that where I go, thou canst not follow me, what? Amen. Now. So that's the difference. Amen. Uh, so he says, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. And then verse 37, now Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? Peter says, I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Truly, truly, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Remember, Peter said, I will lay down my life for you. Yeah. But Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crowed three times, two times, you're going to deny me three times. So he letting them know that it's not going to be anything pretty. Mm -hmm. Because for Peter to go from talking about, I will follow you wherever, to Jesus said, Peter, you're going to deny me for all this is over with. That's letting them know this is not going to be pretty, what's getting ready to happen. Amen. And because what was getting ready to take place, uh, the trial and the false accusations, all these things, uh, Jesus knew that they would need strength and they would need encouragement. 
it. So he takes the opportunity as we go into John chapter 14 to set forth to provide this strength and encouragement that they would soon need. And I'm so thankful that he took the time to encourage these brothers at this time the way he encouraged them because over 2,000 years later, we are still encouraged Amen. by these very words. Amen. So Peter, you don't understand what's getting ready to take place here. So you're going to need to be strengthened a little bit. And I need to give you some assurance and some reassurance. So let me share this with you, Peter, and the rest of you guys. He says in John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto me, myself. That where I am, you may be also. Amen. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. But Thomas said unto him, Lord, we really don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Well, I'm glad he asked that question because he said, and how can we know the way? Well, let the way explain to him. The way says to him, I am the way. Not only that, I am the truth and I am the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. See, I'm talking about going to the Father. Now, let you know that no man can come to him but by me. He says, if you had known me, you should have known the Father also. And from his point, you know him and have seen him. Now, Philip gets in on it and said unto him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Hmm. He said, show us the Father, and that will be enough. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how says thou then show us the Father? Mm -hmm. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Are you doubting? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelt in me, he doeth the works. Yep. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works. He said, don't believe that he's in me and I'm in him, at least for the works that I've done. The works you've seen me do, at least for their sake. Mm -hmm. Believe me. He said, truly, truly, first where I say unto you, he that believed on me in the works that I should do, he also he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Right. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in me, the Son. If you should ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then it says, oh, by the way, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then Jesus says, here's our close in verse 16. Because he's preparing them for his eventual departure. But he wants them to know that even when I leave and I'm going for an extended period of time, I'm not going to leave you alone. Amen. You know, we're never alone in Jesus. Amen. He says in verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, when the world cannot receive, which the world whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Hmm. And he says in verse 18, I will not. Now, when Jesus says, I will not, you can take that to the bank. He says, I will not leave you. Comfortless, I will come to you. And that word comfortless there is 
uh, implies I will not leave you uh, orphaned. I will not leave you without the proper protection. Without the proper uh, nourishment, without, I will not leave you often. Amen. So as I close here, we want to look at the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and how he dwells in us, and what he does, and how he abides in us, and his purpose in our life. And Jesus, in this text, he starts out in verse 1, he uh, uh, gives them words of comfort. And then he goes on to give them the purpose behind this leader, but he assures them that he's coming again. But then he reassures them, he promises them that another comforter will come. Mm -hmm. And they will not be alone, and he will not leave them orphaned. The promise of another comfort, as he uh, state here in verse 16, uh, it clearly gets us to see or understand that they already were in the presence of one comfort. Right. You see, Jesus is a comfort. Right. Jesus was a comfort. Just simply hearing his voice, it brought comforting quality. The qualities for to those you remember when he was walking on the water in the midst of the storm and Peter and they all were afraid and then he said step out there had to be words of comfort when he said to Peter come for Peter to take that step down out that uh, boat yeah. on the water in the midst of a storm so Jesus himself was a comforter he says, I'm going to send you another comforter. Amen. And in 1 John 2, 1, it talks about Jesus as a comforter. And there in 1 John 2, 1, uh, the word uh, comforter, uh, advocate, it translates from the same Greek word, which is uh, paraclete. And that word for your spelling is P-A-R-A-K-A-L-E-T-E. -E. Uh, it's a comforter. That word in 1 John 2, 1, it translates the same as the word paraclete or comforter does in this text we're looking at. It says, uh, it signifies to call to one side. This word comforter means to call to one side. Have you ever, as a, as a young child, uh, maybe, maybe you were sick, or uh, uh, maybe, let me give you a better, better example, a storm brewing. A storm is in the process. And, and you wake up out of the bed and you're, you are afraid, you are being afraid, and you wake up out of the bed, and then you go to your parents or your grandparents, and then they say, say come here, baby. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they call you to their side. And you are immediately comforted. Amen. Amen. So that word there, it talks about uh, a comforter, a uh, one who is called to one side. One side. And to comfort uh, also means, uh, it's used to uh, help us to understand what it means to encourage or to aid. A comforter is one who encourages us, who aids us, who counsels us, who assists us. A comforter can also be one who pleads in behalf of another. Amen. Now don't tell me you have never found a situation in yourself in a situation where you needed somebody That's right. to come and talk or speak on your behalf. That's, right. That's a comforter. But the comfort we're talking about has, carries way more weight than any comfort that any of us can provide to one another. We're talking about this comforter that Jesus said, if I don't leave, he can't come. But he says, I'm going to send you another in my place so that though you are alone, you will never Alone. Mm -hmm. So this is the comfort we want to talk about. To encourage, to aid, to counsel, to assist, to plead on behalf of. So this paraclete, that word I gave you earlier, that Greek word paraclete, is thus a comforter. He's an advocate, a helper, a counselor, a teacher.
teacher, an intercessor, and an exhorter. And we talked about this on our Wednesday night studies, amen. Our brother Sam got this out on Wednesday night. We had another, another very good study. Our Lord said we'll, we'll pick back up and uh, we'll do some uh, uh, summary on uh, the last week and we'll pick back up so we get you guys where, where we are. We had another great study uh, talking about that, that comforter. In uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1, remember he talked about uh, the oppressed, how Solomon talked about the oppressed, and then he said on the side of their uh, enemy, the oppressor there was power, but they had no comforter. So those same words we're talking about now are the same words that are applied now in the sense that Solomon was speaking about uh, the comforter. So we're going to look at this comforter. This helper, this counselor, this teacher, this intercessor, this exhorter. And we're going to see how he works and abides in us. How he dwells in us. And that's all I have for this evening, amen. amen. I just want to set it up. Now I got your interest, me. Amen. amen. <laughs> On the next Lord's Day, uh, next time I uh, get opportunity to stand before you on the evening service, we will pick back up. But I just want to introduce you to this comforter. And we'll look at this comforter and the role that he plays in our lives, our lives, and how he abides in us, and how he works in us, and how God works through us using this confidence, this Holy Spirit. And he heals a he. He heals a person. He is not a thing. He is not a man. He is not an uh, object in the sense nope. of just like this. These things are objects. He's not an object in that sense. He is the third person in the God here. Amen. He is intelligent. Yep. He hears. Yep. He sees. He can fix. Yep. Knowing you uh, do something wrong. Something be eating at you because you know what the is wrong. He can fix. Amen. He reproves us. But we're going to look at all that, amen. The Holy Spirit, the comfort. If you're tonight, you're not a child of God, you become a child of God by being obedient to the gospel of Christ. We would not even be aware of what the gospel of Christ is if it had not been for the Holy Spirit of God. You see, the Holy Spirit of God moves certain men to write what they have been directed to write. Amen. No prophecy of the scripture of love in a prior interpretation. But the prophecy came out in old time by the will of man. The holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So we know that the Holy Spirit is instrumental in giving us God's word. And God sent the Son. The son died on the cross. He was buried and rose again the third day. He got up and he told his disciples to go into the world and teach this good news and tell them that they are willing to hear this. They have to believe it. They have to have a change of mind. They have to be willing to confess they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then have the sins washed away by baptism. And in that act, we receive the Spirit of God. And God is the Spirit. And that allows us to communicate directly with Him. And as we go through our life, the Holy Spirit of God interacts in our life. He dwells in us. And we're going to look at Galatians chapter 5, something that I think is very, very touching and very important to us, where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Right. So we'll look at all of those things, but if you're tonight you're not a child of God, we want you to come by being obedient to the gospel of Christ. If you're tonight you're a child of God, you fall by the wayside and keep prayer for yourself and someone else, or you just want to take this opportunity to publicly thank God. We want you to take that opportunity to come now as you stand singing songs and encourage. Hello.